Hi, I'm Drew Taylor, CEO of Astroprint. And this video is a walkthrough of Astroprint clusters in a, a more detailed fashion. And it's meant for people that are setting up the system and they're gonna be administrators of the system so they can understand everything it can do. So first you'd wanna log in, of course. Let's talk about users first. You're gonna to need to invite users into your platform. It's very simple to do. Simply hit invite and you put in people's email addresses. You can also upload a CSV file for this. Once people have been invited, you wanna come in and uh, uh, either uh, put them in groups, if you're using groups, a lot of people don't, and select what roles they have. There are four primary roles, or four total roles, I should say, that people can have. They can be an admin, a maker, a carrier, which is also a, a courier, and then a requester. A requester is who's requesting the objects or what is the, the place these objects are gonna be delivered to. For example, in the COVID crisis, this is almost always a medical facility. It's, it's where the printed objects end up. So you would assign those roles to people right here in this user section. And then of course, when they log in, they won't see everything you see. Uh, a carrier will not see most of the icons on the left and they won't be able to do nearly as much as a maker would, for example. For the designs tab, as an administrator, you can come in and add designs into the system. Uh, other users cannot, only administrators can. because You're the one in charge of what your cluster is manufacturing. Uh, now, uh, you can only import designs that are in your AstroPrint design library already. So if you don't see anything there, just come to, to your upper right and switch over to your AstroPrint cloud account and then put your models in there and then you can import them uh, and they'll be here. Now, uh, all the makers in your, in your cluster can download those files to print them. You can also put in uh, notes for those files. Say for example, please print this at 0.1 millimeter layer height or better, right? Descriptors of it. You can also see how many have been requested how many have been uh, printed and how many are ready for collection. You can even click and see like where, uh, where those are, where those are waiting to be collected, right? Pretty straightforward. The printer's tablets, you have a bird's eye view of all of the manufacturing capabilities of your cluster. So here, you can see what each and every person in your cluster, what, what machines they have access to. Uh, and it doesn't have to be only 3D printers. It could be laser cutters. You even have someone in this sample uh, cluster that uh, was doing sewing for sewing of uh, cloth masks during COVID. And they wanted to put in their sewing capabilities, right? Uh, so again, bird's eye view, you can see what everybody has, what they have access to. Maybe they even have notes in here. They can only print with or uh, work with certain materials or only a certain number of hours a day. They have access to the machine. You can also add your own. And then of course, if it's your own uh, uh, capabilities, you, you can remove or edit uh, those. Now the prints tab is where you get you can come see a bird's eye view of all of the prints that have been uh, done by your cluster, prints or, or objects made, I should say. You can also, if you want to, come in and set it up to only show ones that you have done and, and filter out the ones done by other people in your cluster. Uh, now, uh, after, if you're also making objects for your cluster, you're an admin and a maker, then you're probably gonna want to report prints uh, when, they're, when they've been done. To report a print, you just select which uh, file or which object is it that you uh, printed. Does it relate to a batch uh, of prints or is it not in a batch? And what was it made on? Uh, and then you would hit save and log that. Many people are using the batch functionality here so you can also just create a new batch. Let's say the batch name here is batch 108, and it's, uh, you know, leave off the description for now. We would add the batch. 
And then I could come in, select the batch, or I'm sorry, click on the batch, and then uh, report prints in the batch. Okay, I printed that headband on my Fortis machine, let's say, and I printed 10 have been done. Hit save, and there they are, they're in, and their status is printed. Right? Now I can also come in and change batch status, let's say they've all been printed, but I'm, I'm gonna say now I've, I've done my inspection, my quality control, whatever else I need to do, uh, sanit sanitizing the objects, who knows, but I know now it's ready for collection. And I'm gonna select where does it need to be collected, right? Let's say I printed them at my house and I'm at my house and then I hit save. And now all of the objects in this batch are ready for collection. Pretty straightforward there. We come down to requester places. So again, requesters are where these objects are gonna end up. In the COVID crisis, that's been a medical facility. If you're using clusters for another purpose, then it, it may be somewhere else, right? Now, if you want to give requesters access to the system, you can, and then they could actually come in and add request and say, hey, I need 20 more of these, right? And add them in. Uh, or you could also choose to not give them access and then you um, uh, just do that manually. Okay. You can have a, a map view here of all of the requesters. And then you can even filter this. Like if you want to just see, you know, requesters that have more than a certain number of uh, requests, right? You can filter out. Let's see. So pretty straightforward with everything there. Of course, if you need to edit information about the quest requesters, such as adding delivery instructions, uh, changing contact information uh, for the requester, that can all be done here as well. Now, uh, pickup places. So pickup places are where a carrier or a courier is gonna go pick up the objects and then they're going to later deliver them, obviously, uh, to the requester. So a pickup location could be, let's say, the house where someone is manufacturing uh, the objects, uh, a 3D printer farm or whatnot as well, or a business like that. It could also be a central drop-off location. If in your cluster you have 20 people 3D printing objects and all delivering them to one person's house, then that house becomes the pickup place for the carrier to go pick up and then take them to the um, medical facility or wherever they're going. So adding pickup locations is very simple. Uh, name, name of the uh, location, address, so on and so forth. Who's in charge of that group? Is location also a requester? Uh, sometimes they are. Um, so you would just select that. It's also a map here. Now this is very, very helpful for a lot of people. Uh, for a lot of clusters, they don't wanna send a carrier until let's say there's more than 20 or 30 objects ready to be picked up. You don't wanna send a carrier to pick up one or two of something in most situations. So you could just come on here and say, okay, only show me places that have more than each of these numbers, right? If I, let's say I don't do pickups till more than 25 objects. So then I can come over and say, oh, okay, there's only one uh, that has that many, right? And I could mark it as collected right here. You can also highlight on the map where different things are. Pretty straightforward again. Again, we can also see these numbers over here, uh, which objects or, or which uh, locations have how many prints ready for pickup. And then lastly, we have roots. Uh, and this has been incredibly helpful for a lot of clusters. So a route is when you're ready to send uh, a carrier to go pick up and deliver uh, these printed objects. 
So you come up, you hit create root. First, you're gonna select the requester. What is the end place for this to be delivered to? Say here we have Dr. Spangler's office. Uh, and then you can see, okay, he's requested a total of 50 of these COVID headbands. I can come in and see what are all the pickup places that actually have those headbands, right? And we have 30, 30 available. And then I can go ahead and uh, create route. Now, if we had more than requested, let's say we had a, a hundred made and he only requested 50, then we can choose to send them the whole 100 or only send them the 50 and hold 50 back as a partial, um, uh, partial delivery of a batch. Anyway, then you create the route, you could name the route, uh, May 22 delivery, delivery to Dr. Spangler, and create the route. All right, and it shows up right here. We can make notes for the route. If you open it up, now there's two different views for the route, carrier view and requester view. So, uh, and both of them can download a PDF of their view if they want a printout of this. Carriers may find that very helpful uh, when they're driving. Now for the carrier view, of course they see the status, uh, they see destination information on here. Uh, also, uh, they can open up uh, Google Maps uh, as well to navigate through. If there's many different pickup uh, places and multiple drop-off places, they all show up in order down here. And the, the Google Maps uh, feature kind of help, helps handle that. Uh, they can also mark as delivered. The requester view is uh, much more simple because you know the requester just needs to know what's being delivered, if it's on the way, if it's been delivered or not. And that is the basics of what you need to know to get started. Um, oh, while we're here, let's, let's go on down. There are account settings. So account settings are your personal account uh, settings uh, that, that every user in your cluster has. And you may want to put in your address if, if it's a pickup location, a little bit about you if you want to join groups within your cluster. One thing that's important is uh, because of some of the regulations in Europe uh, around uh, privacy, you will have to get people that join your cluster to actually opt in to allow you to send them emails and communicate through email. So you will need to request them to come in and check, check this box. Um, if you want to communicate through the system. Now, uh, there's also a section for cluster settings. As an admin, you have access to this. This is where you would add new groups, uh, change the name of your cluster, the description of your cluster, a general location uh, as well. And this location deal, uh, deals with where you show up on this map. Again, that's you know if you want to be publicly uh, findable or searchable. Again, this app was originally developed for people battling COVID and pretty much everyone wanted to be able to be found by a local maker community. If you're using this uh, uh, sometime in the future for business purposes, you may not want to be on this map and uh, you just talk to us through things that we can do to have you off of the map. But those are the basics. Uh, Please let us know if you run into issues, uh, what issues you run into, um, what feature requests that, that uh, you see with this, and uh, especially if there's additional use cases. So again, we built this to battle COVID, uh, and then now we're moving into a phase where some people are wanting to start to use this for other business reasons. So if you have a business purpose behind this and and but you need other features for for that let us know we're open to it